Okay, so we have a real-time stock monitor here. Um, this consists consists of the PIC32 uh, ESP Wi-Fi module, and along with the keypad, which you can enter in uh, stock tickers like you see here, uh, modeled after just like a simple telephone keypad or something you see on a cell phone. And so the way it works is on the TFT <coughs> screen here, you can see that the IP address um, this ESP module was assigned to. We have connected to Red Rover, one of the free Wi-Fi networks here at Cornell, and um, this is also connected to a client. Um, over, it's connected over Wi-Fi or Red Rover to the client running correct. on your, okay. And so uh, right here we can see that it's waiting for a connection for the client. The client is the one that um, makes the um, API requests, um, parses the data, and then sends it over Wi-Fi to the ESP module, which communicates with the PIC32 via serial. Okay, so start it up. Over so there. as soon as we connect, we see that it's connected and it's ready to go. On the bottom, we can enter in a stock ticker using the keypad. Okay, so, so do that. I'll just enter in, say, Apple. So we enter in a two, press enter, another two, and then uh, P, and then an L. We fetch the stock, and then we can see the stock is updates in real time every 10 seconds. And on the right, we see either a green arrow if it increased from the last price, a red arrow if it um, decreased, or a blue dash if it stayed constant. I see, and it just updated to a dash, so the last two readings have been the same. Yep. And so we can just keep going, entering more tickers. If you enter in a faulty ticker, um, it'll catch that error, and it won't um, break the whole system. So it's and and what happens if if Wi-Fi gets interrupted? It rec does it recover gracefully or does it blow away? So we haven't actually had that issue before, so we haven't tested it. Okay. But um, I think you sh it should probably just uh, read error because it didn't get anything. But you, you had some fun getting the Wi-Fi module actually running, right? Yeah. So the Wi-Fi module was very tricky to get started. Uh, one, just setting it up, getting it connected to the Wi-Fi network here. Um, that was very annoying. We had to regi register this device with Cornell IT, and um, even sending commands to it via serial wasn't very, very straightforward, especially since we were doing it from the PIC at first. Um, so to start off, we switched to like a serial monitor. We could quickly enter in different commands. Using that, we were able to get it to work, so then we switched to sending the commands via the PIC. And uh, we had a lot of trouble with the Terminator character on the responses the ESP would send to the PIC. So when we were trying to read from the buffer, uh, it's very difficult to know when the transmission had ended, uh, when we had read enough. And some of the responses had different terminators. So most responses were figured out if they were terminated by a new line followed by a carriage return, um, that would be the end of this response. But for arguably our most important response, which contained the stock price information, that didn't work. Um, but we took advantage of the, the fact that those responses were always the same length, so we created a separate function um, to read in the fixed no amount, of, amount of characters. Um, with, and with no terminator. So yeah, with no terminator. Okay. And that, that seemed to work pretty well. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.